Hello UPSC warriors. Are you tired of staring at those dusty textbooks? Do you dream of dropping facts and definitions faster than a rapper drops rhymes? Well, fret no more. Buckle up because you're about to enter the polity pandemonium zone. For the next 60 days, we are ditching the dull and diving headfirst into a daily dose of five UPSC Polity MCQs. Consider this your brain gym. Five questions a day to keep the stagnation at bay. We'll be tackling everything from articles you can quote in your sleep to those head scratching ones that make you Google what is polity anyway. So whether you are a seasoned aspirant or a nervous newbie, this is your chance to turn those prelims into playdates with perfection. And by the end of this roller coaster ride, you are not just going to be prepared for the UPSC prelims, you're going to be so well versed in polity that you could probably draft a constitutional amendment in your sleep. And who knows, maybe one day you'll look back and say it all started with that polity daily drill. Remember, champions are built on reps. So let's get quizzing and together we'll conquer this UPSC beast one MCQ at a time. So let the drill begin. This is day one of Polity Daily Drill. Five questions for today. And this is your question number one. Which of the following are constitutional bodies? State Finance Commission, Northeastern Council, National Commission for Minorities, National Human Rights Commission. So now, whenever you see a question on the screen, you can pause the video and if possible, try solving the question in a minute. That's the general rule. Of course, you will have certain questions which are longer, have five or six statements. It might take more time. So solve accordingly, pause accordingly. Now, State Finance Commission, is it a constitutional body? Yes, of course. Article 243, capital I. This is a constitutional body formed every five years by the governors in the states. Northeastern Council is not a constitutional body. It's a statutory body formed under the Northeastern Council Act of the year 1971. National Commission for Minorities again is not a constitutional but a statutory body. What is a statutory body? Statutory bodies are those bodies which are formed by either an act of parliament or an act of state legislature, basically formed by an act of legislature. So NCM formed in the year 1992 as per the NCM Act of 1992. And NHRC of course is not a constitutional body but a statutory body formed under the provisions of TPHRA, the Protection of Human Rights Act of the year 1993. So, one only is the correct answer, the only constitutional body amongst the given options. Moving on to the second question, consider the following statements regarding Voting in the presidential elections. In the year 2022, the elections that were held, EVMs were used for the first time during voting. Oh, this is a wrong fact. Of course, during the elections of the president, we do not use EVMs. What do we use? We use ballot papers, right? So EVMs are not used during the presidential elections. The population of 1971 census is used while calculating the vote value of MLAs. Absolutely correct. What's the formula for vote value of MLAs? Population upon all the elective seats into, of course, 1 by 1000. But this population is of 1971 census fixed for the first time for 25 years in the year 1976, again in the year 2001, fixed again for 25 years till the year 2026. And this has been done to promote family planning norms. So 
2 is correct. The population of 1971 census is used while calculating the vote value and not the current census. So 2 is the right statement, 1 is the wrong one. Which of the statements given above is or are incorrect? Please don't be confused. Right answer here is A1 only. Moving on to the third question. Consider the following statements. The Indian Parliament comprises of Lok Sabha, Rajya Sabha and the President. This is absolutely correct. As per which article? Article 79 has been in news a lot recently, especially during the inauguration of the new parliament. Questions were being raised as to why the president is not inaugurating the parliament despite her being a part of the parliament. So please read article 79 as well on your own. It clearly talks about how the parliament comprises of the House of People, the Council of States, as well as the President. The state legislature does not include the governor of the respective state. Now, this is absolutely incorrect. Just like Article 79, we also have an Article 168, which says that the legislature, or for every state, there shall be a legislature, which will comprise of, of course, the governor, the legislative assembly and in certain states how many states six states legislative councils so this is incorrect two is wrong third statement as per the constitution the maximum permissible strength in the Rajya Sabha is 250 this is absolutely correct as per article 80 clause 1 how many seats are there in the Rajya Sabha, 238 seats would come from states and UTs and 12 would be nominated, nominated from four different fields of art, literature, science and social service. So one is right, three is right, how many statements are correct? B. Two statements are correct. Moving on to question number four, consider the following statements. The number of judges in the Supreme Court can be increased by the Parliament by law. By law, meaning what? A simple majority. Absolutely correct. As per Article 124, Clause 1, the number of judges in the Parliament can be increased by the Parliament or number of judges in the Supreme Court, my bad, can be increased by the Parliament by law. Supreme Court Number of Judges Act 1956 needs to be amended. Though originally, we just had the CJI plus 7 judges. Now we have the CJI plus 33 other judges. Second one, the number of judges in the high courts can be increased by the respective state legislatures by law. This is wrong. If you refer to article 216, you will find that the number of judges in the high courts are to be decided by the President of India, right? So very simple as an observation would be, the number of judges in the Supreme Court can be increased through a legislative order or action and the number of judges in the high courts are increased by an executive order or action. So two is incorrect. And then in case a high court serves two or more states, the number of judges in such high courts is increased by the parliament. This is also wrong. Number of judges in the high courts are always increased by the president. There are some high courts which serve more than one state. There are three such high courts which serve more than one state. Right? Those are the high courts of, of course, Guwahati, High Court of, what else? The Bombay High Court and the High Court of Punjab and Haryana. Though there are some other high courts as well, which serve a state and some UT. And then we have the High Court of Jammu and Kashmir, as well as High Court of Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh, as it has been renamed. This High Court is very unique. Why? Because this High Court serves only UTs and not just one, but two UTs. We have one more High Court, Delhi High Court, which serves only the UT of Delhi. Anyway, so the number of judges in the High Courts can be increased again by the 
president of India and not the respective states or we do not also need the parliamentary intervention. So two and three are wrong. How many statements are incorrect? Two statements are incorrect. B is the right answer. And the last question for today. How many of the following are a part of state as per Article 12 of the Indian Constitution? So, you know, Article 12 defines the word state, but this definition is only meant to be applicable in or for Part 3 of the Indian Constitution. Part 3 contains what? Fundamental rights. Reserve Bank of India. Reserve Bank of India established in 1934, of course, is a part of state as per the definition of state under Article 12. We, in fact, also have a very interesting judgment in this regard. The very famous Ajay Hasia case, which talks about how certain bodies can be put under the definition of state as per Article 12. So, this judgment was where Supreme Court said that any body which has been created by a statute, lawful bodies, legal bodies are all a part of state. Hence, CVC through the CVC Act also becomes a part of state. Zilla Parishad, that is the part of panchayats or local authorities, local bodies, this is also a part of state. There have been numerous judgments in this regard. The very popular Madras Pinjarapole case of 1961 or the Dr. Dinesh Kumar case of 1986 talks about how the municipal councils are a part of state, the panchayats are a part of state under Article 12. Interesting is high courts. Are high courts a part of state under Article 12? No, they are not. Supreme Court in the very famous Rupa Hurra case, I hope you know Rupa Hurra case was the case where Supreme Court gave a lot of interesting conclusions. We will come to them slowly and steadily as and when we proceed with these videos. One such interesting concept that was given in the Rupa Hurra versus Ashok Hurra case was the concept of curative petitions. This entire idea of curative petitions came into existence with the Rupa Hurra case. Anyway, so in the Rupa Hurra case, Supreme Court very clearly said that constitutional courts, the superior courts, the Supreme Court, the high courts, they will not be covered under the definition of state as per Article 12. So, of course, 3 is out of contention. So, we have 1, 2 and 4. That means 3 such bodies are a part of state. C being the right answer. And just on a side note, very interesting to note, this body, BCCI, the Board of Cricket Corruption in India, sorry, the Board of Control for Cricket in India, uh, this is also not a part of state as per the Z Telefilms Limited Judgment of 2005 or the Cricket Association of Bihar case. Supreme Court has said that BCCI is not a part of state as per Article 12. So, this is all as far as the discussions are concerned for today. We'll meet in the next video. That's tomorrow. Till then, that's all for me. Jai Hind.